Hello everybody, uh, my name's Ben. Uh, this is my Marchesa deck. Um, Marchesa is uh, my commander. She's uh, one in Grixis, and she says uh, creatures in control have dethrone, and she has dethrone as well. Dethrone's a mechanic that whenever you attack someone with the most life, or tied for the most life, you put a 1-1 counter on it. And the thing that makes her really great is this last little clause down here that says that whenever a creature I control with a 1-1 counter on it, I go to the graveyard. I bring it back under the uh, under my control to the field, so um, it just makes it makes getting rid of my creatures really hard. Um, she's great. She's a three three for four. Uh, she gets out of hand very quickly, and the way that I built this deck is more of a beat down control kind of deck. Um, I do a lot of like really nasty uh, mean things. Now uh, let's move into my land base. Uh, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm running five, five foiled swamps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven not foiled islands. And one, two, three, four. Four mountains, two of them are foiled. Uh, now let's move on to my non-basics. Now, Marchesa is a uh, it's kind of deck that you don't want to be sitting at the most life at all times. So I have a lot of ways of uh, manipulating my life total. Mainly by using cards like these. Uh, Sulfurous Spring. It says that I can... Uh, Tap it for colorless, or I could pay one life to add red or black to my mana pool. So it's really, uh, it's really good for doing, uh, for controlling my life total. Um, it's the same thing for Shed and Reef. Pay one life, add red or blue to my mana pool. And then I have Underground River. And Underground River says pay one life, add blue or black to my mana pool. And uh, then I also have Shocklands. So... This is a Spanish uh, Blood Crypt. It's a, uh, you pay two life, it comes in untapped. It taps for red and black. I also have a foiled Watery Grave. This is actually the, uh, the whole reason I built this deck in the first place is because I pulled this card. A uh, little vain, maybe, but um, I think it's a pretty cool card. And uh, it needed to be played. And then I have my obligatory Fetchland. Pay one life, search my library for a swamp or a mountain. A lot of my uh, lands are dual, so um, I normally get the, the colors that I need. Now, let's move on to uh, my utility lands. Uh, of course, I've got Command Tower. Then I have my Scry lands, uh, Tower of Epiphany, Temple of Malice. And then I have check lands like Sunken Hollow, Smoldering Marsh, and I have one Guild Gate, the Rat Coast Guild Gate. I have a Man Land, a Wandering Firm Roll, and the last land, well, second to last land, is this is a Pachuca Bog. It's kind of obligatory. Sell some of these graveyards, pretty good. And then I have a Temple of the False God from Elspeth versus Kior. It's a really cool card. Like the uh, like the art on it. Uh, let's move on to the creatures. I'm running. Let's see. I think I'm running 29 creatures. First creature is a foiled Demir Doppelganger. Uh, it's pretty good. You can. Uh, it's one in a uh, one a blue and a black, and um, for one in a blue and a black, I can exile a card from a graveyard, and it becomes a copy of that card. So I can pretty much uh, I can copy whatever is really good in the graveyard and uh, get some value off of it. Uh, then I have Baleful Strix. It's a one one for blue black, and it has flying and death touch. And when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, so, I get double value off of it if it stays out, and I get a dethrone trigger on it, so when he blocks it, 
It kills stuff, comes back, I draw a card. Really good. Uh, let's see. I have a Phyrexian Ingester. Uh, let's see, it's uh, six in a blue, and it has imprint, so I can exile a card, or exile a creature, and it gets plus X plus Y. So uh, it can get pretty nasty very quickly. I also have Dragon Lord Silmagar. Uh, when he comes into the battlefield, um, he can take control of a target creature or planeswalker. Uh, yeah, there's some shenanigans shenanigans that can happen with this card. Um, he's fun. Most of the time he gets hated out, though. For good reason. Uh, let's see. Terramit the Murder King. He is a uh, 2 2 for 2, red and black. He says uh, you can pay 1 in a red, sacrifice another creature, he deals 2 damage to target player, or you can pay 1 in a black and sacrifice another creature, bring him back to, uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield. So um, he's kind of hard to get rid of. Uh, he's actually pretty great. Um, I, I normally use him as a sack out, outlet. He's helpful in that end. Uh, let's see. Next is a card that I actually haven't played in the deck yet, but I've seen some decks run it. It's called Haven Ghoul Lich. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5. And it says you can pay 1. Um, I may cast a target creature card from a graveyard this turn. When I cast that card, Haven Ghoul Lich gains all the active, active abilities until the end of the turn. So, um, I really haven't tested this card out, but it looks good. And I think I'm going to like it a lot in this deck. Uh, let's see. Then I have Minerak Liege. It's uh, 3 in hybrid red-blue. And it says other uh, red creatures I control get plus 1, plus 1. Other blue creatures I control get plus 1, plus 1. And then for hybrid red and blue 4, I can put a blue or red creature from my hand onto the battlefield. Um, that's an ability I really haven't used. It's just good. It's a good lord to pump stuff. Uh, next I have uh, Kothafed, Soul, Hoard, Soul Hoarder. He's a 6-6 six, six for 6, um, double black, and he's got flying. Whenever permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard uh, from the battlefield, I may draw a card and lose one life. Uh, he's pretty good. He's a 6-6 six, six flying, flying beater for 6. Can't complain. And he's foiled. If you guys haven't noticed, there's a bit of a theme here. Uh, next is the Obligatory da Dax Duplicant. Um, there's a buddy of mine that plays an MR deck, and every time I play against him, Dax Duplicant's coming out as a duplicate, or a copy of uh, Ammar. And it gets out of hand very quickly. Especially when I start vomiting my hand with creatures. Uh, let's see. Next is my a uh, one drop. It's Diagraph uh, Ghoul. It's a two two for one, and he comes in tapped. He's a bit underwhelming. Um, I'm probably gonna find something else to put there, but for right now I like him. Uh, let's see. Next is uh, Chasm Skulker. It's a one one for three, and it says that whenever you draw a card, put a one one counter on him, and then. Um, when he dies, I can put X 1 1 blue squid uh, creature tokens with Island Walk onto the battlefield where X is the number of 1 1 counters on Chasm Skulker. So, um, this is actually really good. Uh, since I found this card, I have been uh, playing it and I really enjoy it. I find it's uh, very, very good. Especially when I have a uh, sack outlet out with uh, Marchesa. There's been a couple games where I've gotten it up to like 5 or 6, and then I. Um, I swing for seven, then I sacrifice it, make a bunch of tokens, and then I use those tokens like, um, normally my sack outlet is uh, Viserys here, so you guys will see that coming up pretty soon. It's really nice to be able to scry and see see what I'm going to draw into. It's very helpful. And um, this card's kind of an MVP. I really like it. Works good. Next is uh, Dusk Mantle Seer. It's a 4-4 four, four for four. It's a... Um, two and a blue and a black. It has flying at the beginning of my upkeep. Each player reveals the top card of his or her library and loses life to uh, equal to 
that card's converted mana cost and puts that into his or her hand. Uh, it's pretty good. Doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, it's kind of slow at first, but uh, I like it. It's there. It does stuff. It serves its purpose. Let's see. Next is uh, Palace Familiar. It's a 1-1 one, one for one uh, for 2. It has flying. And it says that when it dies, draw a card. Again, it's kind of a redundant card, seeing as I've got the Baleful Strix. But it's good. Um, put some old one counters on it. It goes away. I draw a card. Comes back. Yeah, it's a flying blocker. It's good. Uh, this right here is... Um, next card is a 1-drop. It's Cloudfin Raptor. And it's a 0-1. It has flying and evolve. And Evolve says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield under my control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than um, this creature, put a 1-1 counter on it. So, uh, this is another MVP of my deck. It's a little um, underwhelming at first when you see it, but um, it works really well, because there's been several times where I just uh, I get this in my opening hand, play it, and then I just curve into uh, bigger creatures. And... Um, but before I know it, I've got a 4-5 flyer, and uh, no one's got anything with flying that can block it. So it's normally a it's a it's a target for removal. So they remove this instead of Marchesa. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, let's see. Next is a bit of a bomb in my deck. It's uh, Profaner of the Dead, and it's a uh, three three colorless and one blue. It's a Naga Wizard. It has exploit when. Uh, Profaner of the Dead exploits a creature return to their owner's hand. All creatures an opponent controls with toughness less than the exploited creature's toughness. So, um, this is really great, especially if I have a creature that I've been um, pumping. And um, there's been a couple of times where someone's like, Oh, um, let me Dark Steel Mutation um, your commander. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, I'll just use this. Sacrifice my commander. Uh, she still... Oh, there was one time where she did have 1-1 counters on her. So she did just come back after I exploited her. So it was, uh, it was pretty good. really like this deck. It's a one-sided Cyclonic Rift for creatures. So it's... Yeah, it, it does stuff. It's good. Uh, next is my... Uh, it's a Sack Outlet. It's a 1-drop. One, one it's Carrion Feeder. And uh, it's a 1-1 one, one Zombie, and it says that it can't block... And it's a sacrifice creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and, uh, yeah, it's really good. It's really good, especially when I have a Chasm Scalper. Uh, let's see. Here's the Visera Mage, or Seer that I was talking about. It's a sacrifice, Scry 1. Sacrifice creature and Scry 1. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. Uh, next is Driver of the Dead. It's a uh, three and a black, and it says that when it dies, I can return a uh, creature with converted mana cost two or less from my graveyard to the battlefield. And it's a two two. It's pretty good. Uh, next, I have Thraxamundar. And Thraxamundar is four colorless and Grixis, and he has haste. And whenever he attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on Thraxamundar. Yeah. yeah, this is another pair that's just really great in my deck. Like I said, this deck is very beat down. Uh, next is Deathbringer Thrakkar. And it's a 3-3-4-4 three, three, four, four, and a red and a black. And it says whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may put a 1-1 counter on Deathbringer Thrakkar, and then you can remove a 1-1 counter from him to deal 1 damage to target creature or player. So, um, pretty much when I get this out with uh, Marchesa and, say, Vicera Sage, or Seer, and um, Chasm Skulker, this card does a lot of work. Uh, it helps to blow things up, uh, control the board, and, well, win the game. I love this card. Next, we have uh, Karen Wanderer. It's a shapeshifter, 4-4 four, four for 4 and a black. And it says that as long as a creature with flying is in a graveyard, uh, Karen Wanderer has flying. The same is true for Fear, First Strike, Double Strike, 
uh, Death Touch, Haste, Land Walk, uh, Life Link, Protection, Reach, Trample, Shroud, and Vigilance. So, um, catches everything in the graveyard, gives it those gives it those abilities. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. Uh, next is Pitiless Horde. It's a 5-3 for 2 and a black, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose 2 life, and then you can pay 2 and double black. You can uh, dash it in, it gains haste, and you return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. It's a very aggressive card. Get some beats in. It's uh, I like it. Uh, when I do actually need to just hard cast it, it helps because I lose life at the beginning of my upkeep. I always want to keep my life below whatever what anyone else is, especially when I'm hitting in for a lot of damage. Uh, let's see. Next is Scavenger Drake. It's uh, three and a black, uh, flying. Whenever another creature dies, you may put a one one counter on Scra Scavenger Drake. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, just but. Especially when I have Deathbringer Thrakkar, it gets bigger, takes stuff off of the th uh, the Thrakkar, kills stuff, just make it even bigger, hit in the air. Uh, let's see, next is a really great card. I've, I'm actually surprised at how well she works. It's uh, Exeva Ratko's Blood Witch. And she's uh, two and a black and a red, and she has First Strike Haste and Unleash. Unleash is you can put a 1 1 counter on her. And she can't block. Uh, and then she also says each creature I control with a 1 1 counter on it has haste. So that second ability really doesn't come into play, but she's pretty hard to deal with. She's a 4 4 for 4 with first strike and haste. And uh, normal with dethrone, she just she gets out of hand very quickly. Uh, let's see. Next is. Uh, Herald of Torment. It's a 3-3 three, three, one in double black, and you can bestow it. And it says uh, it, it has flying, and then at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life. Or an enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, and it has uh, flying as well. Pretty good. Very flexible. I like this card a lot. And I like the fact that you're losing life at the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, let's see, next is uh, Micaius, the Unhallowed. He's a legendary zombie cleric, and he says, Intimidate, whenever a human deals damage to you, you destroy it. Other non-humans you control get plus one, plus one, and have undying. Uh, there's been a few times where I've had Micaius out with, uh, with Martresa. You know, they work pretty well together. I mean, she doesn't get persist, but... Uh, so long as she's got one one counters on it, she's on her, she's good. Uh, just makes things very difficult to deal with. Next I have a F Inferno Titan. Um, you know, it's it's kind of an underwhelming card. Well, when I first saw this card, I thought it was very un underwhelming. It doesn't do a whole lot. But um, in March, it's a, it does a lot of work. Especially because whenever it enters the battlefield, it can deal three damage to a... Uh, uh, to an opponent divided as I choose, and it can also deal damage to creatures. And uh, it's also sh also foiled as well. I was pretty happy I found that. I like it. And let's see, next is Notion Thief. It's a 3-1 uh, three, a three, one, four, two, and a blue and a black. Mm, excuse me. It has flash, and it says if an opponent would draw a a card except for the first uh, one he or she draws, and each of his or her draw steps, instead that player skips that, and I draw a card instead. And this card's pretty funny, especially when you're playing against someone with a lot of card draw. And then I have Grenzo, Dungeon Warden. He's a 2-2 two -two for X and a red and a black, and uh, Grenzo, Dungeon Warden, enters the battlefield with X, one one counters on it, and then you can pay two, put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. If it's a creature card with power less than or equal to Grenzo, put it onto the battlefield. Also foiled. Really glad about the, or happy about this card. Alright, that's it for the creatures. Now on to my spells. Uh, my spells are very uh, specific and kind of like a toolbox. Very util uh, utilitarian. Um... First I have 
sinkhole. So two black, the short target land. Uh, it's really good. Then I have uh, Dark Ritual. Pay one black and add three black to your mana pool. Uh, black that really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, ramp, so I threw this in there just because. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, next is Cabal Therapy. In my play group, I pretty much know all of my uh, all of the decks that I play against, so this is pretty good for hitting stuff, especially when they have to reveal what they uh, what they're fetching a lot of times too. It's pretty good, and I also like the clause that it says uh, flashback, sacrifice a creature. Uh, next is dissolve. It's one and double blue, and it says counter target spell, scry one. It's uh, it's okay. Next, I have Mystical Tutor. And Mystical Tutor says I can search my library for a sorcery or an instant and then put it on top of my deck, reveal it, and then shuffle. Uh, let's see. Next is Compelling Deterrence. And it's one in a blue. It says return target non land permanent to its owner hand. Then that player discards a card if you control a zombie. Uh. It's useful. I like it. Uh, let's see. Next is Cruel Ultimatum. It says target an opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, and then loses five life. I may return a creature card from my graveyard to my hand, draw three cards, and then gain five life. That's like the only life gain that I have in this deck, too. And it's foiled, so I have to play it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Fiery Confluence, two and double red, uh, choose three, I may, um, let's see, Fiery Confluence deals one damage to each creature, I don't ever use that, Fiery Confluence deals two damage to each opponent, yeah, it's okay, and then the third one is Destroy Target Artifact, it's, uh, it's pretty good overall all-around card, and let's see, then I have Tragic Slip. For one black, it says target creature gets minus one, minus one. Or morbid, if a creature died this turn, it gets minus 13, minus 13 instead. Uh, play against a lot of indestructible stuff, like uh, Blightsteel Colossus, so that's what this is there for. Next, I have uh, Simulars, Sim, uh, Simulagar's Command. It says uh, three, blue and a black, uh, counter target non-creature spell. Uh, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until the end of the turn. Or destroy target planeswalker. Um, this is a recent addition to the deck. I haven't really played around with it, but it looks pretty good. Uh, next, I have Ponder. Uh, it's one blue. It says look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, you may draw, or you may shuffle your uh, your library and then draw a card. It's pretty good. I like it. Especially in an opening hand. Uh, let's see. Next I have Aetherize. Three and a blue. Return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. Uh, this right here is uh, it's pretty good. It saved me a few times. I like it. Next is uh, Steady Progress. It's uh, two and a blue. It says peripher uh, Proliferate and then draw a card. So um, I had a lot of one one counters so this is really good in my deck. And um, I guess I can also kind of use it politically, especially if someone has uh, Planeswalkers or, you know, anything else. I can just be like, oh, hey, you want to be friends for a bit? They'll be like, yeah, and I'll just be like, yeah, I'll give you a... Okay, that can go up, kind of thing, yeah. That's the only card with pro uh, proliferate in my deck, too. I should probably find some more spots for it. Uh, next is Mark of Mutiny. It says, gain control of target creature until the end of the turn, put a 1-1 counter on it, and untap it. This is the kind of spell that I like to have in my deck. Put one one counters on it. That's exactly where I want to be, especially with Marchesa. And if I have like a sack outlet out, like uh, the Viceroceer or Carrion Feeder, even even better. Uh, next is Painful Truth. Two and a black. It has Converge. I can draw X cards and I lose X life. Where X is the number of colors spent to uh, to cast Painful Truths. So um. 
Most of the time I'm drawing three with this, losing three life. Draw three cards. It's good. I like it. Uh, let's see here. Next spell is Words of Wisdom. It's from Odyssey. This is an old card. It says uh, you draw two cards and then each player draws a card for one and a blue. I like it. It's kind of weird and janky, but it's a party card. I like it. Next is uh, Overwhelming Denial. It's uh, two and a blue. It just says counter. It, it can't be countered. And it's counter target spell. It also has Surge for double blue. So uh, it's really good. I like it. It fits into the deck. Uh, next up is Reality Shift. One and a blue. It says exile target creature. It's control. It's controller manifests the top card of his or her library. Um, I'm playing blue removal. Blue really doesn't have a whole lot of removal. This right here, this is this is my jam. This is what I'm looking for. I really like this card. That's great, especially like when I said, you know, I play against someone that plays Amar. Well, he's got protection from a quarter of my deck, and most of my removal is black, so having a blue removal as an option is always great. Uh, let's see. Next is Geist Blast. Geist Blast deals two damage to target creature or player. And then you can pay two and a blue XL Geist Blast from your graveyard. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new uh, targets for the copy. This is great. I really like this. Especially in my graveyard. Uh, let's see. Next is Act of Treason. I can gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until the end of the turn. It's really good. I like it. Uh, let's see. Next we have uh, Brainstorm. One blue, draw three cards, put two cards back on top. Uh, it's really good, especially with Chasm Skulker. Next is uh, Deep Analysis. It's uh, three and a blue. It's a sorcery. Draw, uh, target player draws two cards. It also has flashback for one and a blue and pay three life. Really like this card, especially because you can pay life. And next is uh, it's a card you don't see really a lot. It's Rapid Hybridization. It's basically Pongify. It's one blue, destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. That, creature, uh, that creature's controller puts a 3-3 green frog lizard creature onto the battlefield. This card right here, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, next is Telling Time. It's a... Uh, one in a blue, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of those cards onto, into your hand, one on top of your library, and one on the bottom of your library. And it's foiled. Next is Sudden Spoiling. It's one in double black, and it has split second. Creatures uh, target player controls become zero twos and lose all abilities until the end of the turn. This right here is great. Uh, next is Amulet of Rakos, uh, or Rakos Charm, rather, and it says um, I can choose one. I can exile a graveyard, or I can uh, destroy a target artifact, or each creature deals one damage to its controller. Uh, playing against tokens, this is, that third ability is really great, actually. It's, uh... There was one time where I played this and I killed both myself and someone else all at the same time. It was kind of funny. Like, they were they were ready to scoop and I said, wait, wait, don't do that. Just play the game out. Let's see what happens. And then before he could kill me, I killed him and myself at the same time. It was, uh, it was pretty good. It was funny. He wasn't too amused, but I was. How many times do you get to do something like that? I mean... It just doesn't really happen. Uh, let's see. My next spell is Wash Out. And it's from Invasion. It says, Return all perm permanents of a color of your choice to their owner's hand. Uh, this right here is great against green tokens. Someone's playing green. Just tell them to put them all back into their hand. All those tokens just disappear. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. Next I have uh, Vampiric Tutor. And it's uh, one black. Search your library for a card, then shuffle your library, put that card on top of it. You lose two life. And this is the one from Eternal Masters. 
Uh, fun fact, I've only bought four packs and of Eternal Masters, and it, of those four packs, I pulled two Mythics. I pulled this in natural order. So I was pretty lucky in that respect. Uh, let's see, my next spell is Part the Water Veil. Take an extra turn. Four and double blue, and it also has Awakened Six for six colorless and triple blue. I like this card. It's great. Take an extra turn. Can't complain. Uh, my next spell is Press Into Service. It's uh, it says support two, and then I gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap that creature. It has haste. Uh, the thing I like the most about this spell is the support two. Put one one counters and stuff. It's pretty good. And then my last spell is Curse of the Swine. X in double blue. Exile target creature for each creature exiled this way. Its controller puts a 2-2 green boar creature token onto the battlefield. What's that? You got a scary board? Okay. Protection from black? Alright. Just use this. Get rid of everything that you have. Uh, and finally, well, let's move on to my enchantments, actually. I'm only wanting, running one. Goblin Bombardment. Sacrifice a creature. It deals one damage to target creature or player. I like it. It's there. It's janky. Uh, and let's see. My only Planeswalker in the deck is Nickel Bolas Planeswalker. It's a uh, four, a blue, double black, and red. And it has plus three, destroy target, uh, non-creature permanent. Minus two, gain control of target creature. Or minus nine, Nickel Bolas Planeswalker deals seven damage to target player. That player discards seven cards, then sacrifices seven permanents. And it comes in with five loyalty. And look at it. It's foiled. It's just beautiful. It has to be played. Uh, let's see. To wrap things up, I'll show you my uh, artifacts. I'll have the commander be without a soul ring. Uh, it's one. Tap it. It adds two to your mana pool. Next is uh, Chromatic Lantern. Lands of control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and then you can tap it for mana as well. I love this card. Uh, let's see, Hedron Archive. It's four colorless, and you can tap it, add two to your mana pool, or pay two, sacrifice it, draw two cards. Another card that's really great to have out when you have a uh, chess and skulker. And, uh, Swifa Boots. Gotta protect Marchesa. It's a uh, two with one equip, and target creature has hex proof and haste. Then we have uh, dark steel ignit. It's a uh, three colorless, and it says add one man uh, one color of any or add one mana of any color to your mana pool. It's pretty good, self-explanatory. It's mana rock. And then I have Eldrazi monument for five uh, creatures I control get plus one plus one and have flying and are indestructible. At the beginning of my upkeep, sacrifice a creature. If I can't, sacrifice Eldrazi Monument. That's where I want to be. Gotta live that dream, guys. Anyway, um, that's my Marchesa deck. I hope you guys like it. Um, thanks for watching.